Good morning, everybody. So I have a few important things that I would like to share with you today. Um, I saw a video yesterday um, by one of the one of the people who have been abusing me out here uh, on uh, can a Christian lose their salvation? This person is under the belief that no matter what uh, a saved person does, that they cannot lose their salvation. I thoroughly disagree. And I'm going to debate this point today. I'm going to show you quite a few things. And um, you're left to decide for yourself. In the end, we alone will have to answer for our decisions. We cannot blame our pastor. We cannot blame any guru that tricked us. We alone have to answer for our decisions. You've got to get as much knowledge out here as you can about God's Word and the only way to do that is to get your face in the Bible stop listening to people out here stop listening to people out here I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to show you some clips from a couple of uh, videos that uh, that really should make your eyebrows lift up and say what because I'm tired of people being deceived out here. I'm tired of people being deceived. And I'm tired of, of these, these pastors believing that they are above reproach. And that, that they can abuse people out here. And um, think that it's okay that God condones this behavior. As a matter of fact, let me pull that up. Okay. So here's what I want to say. I will put that pastor's video in the description. Um, I saw uh, I saw a video this morning from that prophetess person, and. Um, I'm about to show you uh, a side-by-side -side correlation of what I'm seeing out here. Of what I'm seeing out here. It's, it's not a pretty picture. That's all I'm going to say. So I had read this to you once before. Let me, let me start with, can, can a Christian lose their salvation? Well, this pastor seems to think that they can't. What does the Bible say about losing your salvation? Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened. There's the key word, who had once been enlightened. Have any of these pastors out here been enlightened yet? And the answer is no. They are still of the world. There's your key. There's your key right there. Who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit. One of the things I'm going to be explaining to you today is Satan is also a mimicker of the Holy Spirit. And this is part of the videos that I'm going to be showing you today. And have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come. And then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance. So have they repented for anything? No, because their behavior still reeks of the world as they attack Christians out here. As they have formed the good old boys club or what Bob Larson is now calling them the young guns of deliverance. Are you starting to get a picture here? 
since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? And do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That word lawlessness is going to be key here. That is exactly what these people are, are workers of. Lawlessness. What do I mean by that? In fact, you will understand that they are idolaters, all of them. This is what it means to be of the world. As I told you the other day, before we wake up, everything is before God. That is why Jesus told us we must transcend the world. Before we wake up, we put everything before God. We'll get to God when we get to Him. Now, all of these pastors can say that, that they are men of God. Um, they're casting out demons. Well, you heard the, you heard, <clears throat> you just heard the verse there. Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? We got that prophetess person over there too. Lord, have I not casted out demons in your name? And he said, get away from me. I do not know you. You do not have a relationship with me. You are still of the world. And you are practice, practice, practitioners of lawlessness. You are idolaters. And you have caused others to become idolaters. And what I told you was, idolatry is not just the worshipping of a statue or the worshipping of false gods. You can worship money. You can worship name and fame. Um... You can be worshiping your pastor. You can be seeing these people out here casting out demons and speaking in tongues. You could be worshiping gifts. It's all idolatry. This is what these people out here are pushing. This is what these people out here are pushing. The fact that they accused me of not having the Holy Spirit here because I was not speaking in tongues. Um... It's pushing this idolatry that I must have the gift of tongues in order for me to be a Christian. It's all idolatry. And if I didn't have the gift of tongues, I couldn't get into the good old boys club. It's all idolatry. And they are practicing lawlessness. These people who held themselves up to be the anointed ones will be the ones that Jesus turns away and says that he never knew. What is the other the other way they're practicing lawlessness? Well, lawlessness, number one, God hates above and beyond everything else is idolatry. First commandment, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me. That includes idolizing yourself, thinking that you are all that in a bag of chips. That is idolatry. That ego is idolatry. This is why I keep telling you, you've got to chop away that ego. Satan runs the world. This is why Jesus told us to transcend the world. So when you've got a huge ego, you are idolizing yourself above and beyond God. This is why these people have become believers that they are the ones who are so important, that they are casting out demons. This is what is happening here. The other way they're practicing lawlessness is just by the mere way they had attacked me. They had supposedly these gifts of the Holy Spirit to cast out demons and they refused to help a person that they knew needed their help out here, which was me. What did they do? They attacked me and they made fun of me. It's lawlessness. Then to, to have the, the other one make the video that 
Oh, well, well, you're, you're fighting with these pastors and you're going to have to go groveling back to them. And this pastor that put this video out was the one that said that first. That, that you're fighting, you're saying bad, bad things about the demon slaves and you're going to have to humble, your, humble yourself and uh, go to them to, for their services. This is his ego to believe that this garbage that they puke out here to the public the young guns, yeah, this is all ego. This is all Satan. To believe that these people are the only people out here doing deliverance. That I would have to grovel to people who are abusing me? That is classic, classic narcissistic abuse. And in, in God's language, it is lawlessness. You don't purposely make people suffer. You don't make people beg for a gift that was freely given to you. It's not what you do. That's not of God. And this is what I've been seeing out here this whole time. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 20 to 22. For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world, which these people have not escaped, escape the defilements of the world because they are still of the world they are still chasing name and fame they still have massive egos they still attack people in groups they still pick and choose who they're going to help with the gifts that were freely given to them they have not escaped the defilements of the world so therefore they have never known the lord Therefore, they were never saved to begin with. For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them to never have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit and the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. It's exactly what's happened to these people. As they sit in judgment on an awakened being, this is the, the, the sickness and the sleep of what is going on out here. Ezekiel chapter 18, 24 to 26. But when a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice and does the same abominations that the wicked person does, shall he live? None of the righteous deeds that he has done shall be remembered. Hear that. None of the righteous deeds he has done shall be remembered. If he turns and does the same wicked deeds as the unbelievers, as the unsaved, none of his righteous deeds shall be remembered. Therefore, you have the verse saying, Lord, I've prophesied in your name. I've casted out demons in your name. And the Lord said, I do not know you. You practicer of lawlessness. This is what's happened out here. This is what I've been seeing this whole time. But I had to find the scriptures so that you all would understand and believe what I was saying. Okay? None of the righteous deed that, deeds that he has done shall be remembered. For the treachery of which he is guilty and the sin he has committed for them he shall die. Yet you say, The way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injust injustice, he shall die for it. He shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. What was the message that I put out here to all of those pastors? 
repent or he will allow you to experience what's coming for you was that not the message i gave right from the beginning did i not also give the message that god said he was cleaning up his church did i not also give that message and i'm the one that they're calling a witch and a demon Here's the other thing that I told you, Romans 11, 29. For the gifts of the calling of God are irrevocable. So even though they've turned from God, they're, they're fully in the world. Um, they had the, the, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not remove them. But Satan will begin ruling how they behave and what they do. Okay? And the ego will get more and more inflated. They will be moving further and further and further away from God. Which is what has happened here. It's all about them. They are the young guns of deliverance. Where is God in all of this? Where is God in all of this? First John chapter three, six to nine. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous. They would not be lying about me out here. They would not be calling me a demon and a witch. They would not refuse to help me get out a demon that has tried to kill me six times when they are calling themselves demon slayers these gifts were given to them freely and they withhold them from people who need them they are picking and choosing who will receive these gifts as if they are little gods walking on this earth they gang attack people that is not righteousness. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. And here they were calling me the devil. So as I told you, until people fully wake up, they are projecting. What you think you see in someone else is actually who you are. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. Did you all hear that? So all of this violence that's been going on out here is violence. It's sinning. All of this abuse that has been going on towards me is violence and it's sinning. It is not righteousness. For God's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. I'm going to put these in the description so you all can read them. This is what I've been seeing out here. So let's get a refresher. What does God say on how we should treat each other? Ephesians 4.32 Be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. As God in Christ forgave you. Luke 6.31 And as you wish that others would do to you, so do to them. Ephesians 4, 29-32 Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Like calling people witches and demons. Like telling people not to listen to anything I say. This is lawlessness. Like calling me Saul. Like telling me I'm not a Christian. Like telling me I don't have the Holy Spirit. This is lawlessness and 
And every single one of them that has done this has put themselves in the position of being God who sits on the judgment seat. And you've heard me say this over and over again, that they've kicked God off the throne and they have sat in that on that throne and believe that they have a right to judge people out, to say who's a Christian and who isn't, to say who has the Holy Spirit and who doesn't. Well, who died and left them God? Lawlessness, idolatry. I wouldn't want to be them. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Which is the complete opposite of what, well, as I keep saying, the complete opposite. Everything you're seeing in the sleep is the complete opposite of what God's word said. God's word is the existential truth. So everything you're seeing out there is the complete opposite of the existential truth, which means they are in the sleep. Here are these people calling themselves the anointed ones. They are in the sleep. They are idolaters. And most of all, they are placing themselves above God. Because their egos are massive. It's exactly where Satan wants them. John 15, 12. This is my commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. If you break one commandment, you've broke them all. Matthew 7, 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. 1 John 4, 20-21. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he, his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. I will put these in the description for you. Here is an article that I read. Beloved, do not believe every spirit on signs, wonders, and spiritual gifts. Why? Because Satan mimics these gifts. So I'm reading down towards the bottom of the, to the middle of the page. I will also put this in the description so you can read it for yourself. The section I'm reading, it says, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. So these people are flocking to these mass deliverances. And I'm about to show you exactly what's happening, what I was shown was happening in these mass deliverances. Initially, one might assume the evil of which Paul is speaking is merely immoral behavior, but upon further review, it becomes evident that evil is anything and everything, is anything and every way which counters and takes, takes us away from the knowledge of our Lord, the one true God. Moreover, when Jesus speaks of the evil and adulterous generation, he seeks after a sign. He's speaking of a generation that's not only that's not only deficit of scruples, but they are hard-hearted towards grasping him and his truth. They seek after a sign not to believe, but to justify their unbelief. An example of this at work is when the Pharisees dared demand a sign from Jesus only to attribute his miracles to demonic activity. Luke 11. 14 through 23. Quote, Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me, and how long will they not believe me, with all the signs I have performed among them? 
Numbers 14.11 As we know, God abhors idolatry and repeatedly warns his children to avoid it. Yet in our fallen state, we always tend to fall into it in some way, even after God has shown us who he is. Though God worked miraculous signs and wonders to free Israel from Egyptian bondage, they still played the harlot with idols in the wilderness. Exodus 32 Even after God showed himself strong to Gideon and used him mightily, Gideon and the people were still ensnared by idolatry with the ephod in Ophrah, Judges 8, 22-35. Even as Solomon received from God supernatural wisdom and great wealth, he fell into idolatry to please his multiple wives, concubines, who didn't know the Lord. 1 Kings 11, 1-13 To this point, the point is, despite signs and miracles, the Lord worked in the lives of these individuals and for the whole of Israel. They were still capable of falling into mixed worship, sin. So how much more will the unbeliever remain faithless even in the presence of miracles? As was told to the rich man who asked that the poor man Lazarus be raised and sent to his relatives that they might have faith in God and escape hell. If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through the one rise from the dead. Luke 16 31 this is why every believer is charged to contend for the faith by rooting up and tearing down everything which rises up against the knowledge of God 2nd Corinthians 10 4 to 6 this directive makes perfect sense once one considers how much the Lord abhors idolatry no man nor man-made God of wood or metal shall have his glory no man, no man shall have God's glory. This is exactly what you're seeing out here with these demon slayers and this prophetess. Yet no one is speaking up about this. Now they're coming out here calling themselves the young guns of deliverance. Where is God in all of this? No one is speaking up about this. Yet everyone and their mother was out here attacking me. Why was that? It's called sleep. People who are truly of God get brutally abused out here. This is exactly what's happened. And you all really need to understand what you're seeing out here. None of this violence that you've seen from these pastors is biblical. None of it. None of it. And it does not mean, though it says that... Uh, we should be rooting up and tearing down everything which rises up against the knowledge of God. It does not mean that if someone says something out here that you don't understand, that you come out here and call them a demon and a witch. You are getting into demonic mob mentality. Because you all are in the sleep. You don't even know what you're seeing. This is what happened when Jesus came into everyone's presence. They didn't know who he was. They thought he was working from demonic powers too. Because these people were in the sleep. If you don't learn from history, you're bound to repeat it. What's going to happen here? See, I have the Lord here. It's uh, you know, it, it would be nice if everyone could get along. But because everyone can't get along, I have the Lord here to help me through all of this. You people are missing out on waking up. That's the real sin of all of this. You're sinning against yourselves and God. No man or man-made God of wood or metal shall have his glory, no matter how convincing their powers for all gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Psalm 96.5 Again, the Egyptian magicians, empowered by Satan,
copied every sign and miracle that Moses performed by the power of God. So how might one discern the Spirit actually at work? By the truth of God, by your knowledge of who He is, according to scriptures. Now, we understand that the Holy Spirit powers are given to us. How do we discern if they're coming from God or if they're coming from Satan? Because we understand that Satan mimics these powers. And the only way that we can discern that is by going by God's word. And number one, how I've told you, because of the fact that Satan can mimic these powers, we cannot go by seeing that a person is speaking in tongues and saying that they're of God because Satan can speak in tongues also. What is the one way that we can discern if someone is really following God? It is how they treat other people. As Moses told the children of Israel, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast for him. Deuteronomy 13, 1-4 The trial to come upon the whole world isn't merely about Christian persecution and the increasing of lawlessness. This trial is also a test of faith. Who shall be found to be true? Here we go. This is everything I've been seeing out here. Who shall be found to be true? These people who are calling themselves anointed ones Casting out demons, speaking in tongues, yet attacking people out on the internet. Refusing to give help to someone who needs a deliverance as they are calling themselves deliverance ministers doing this work for God. Refusing to help a person, abusing that person, making fun of that person and calling that person a witch and a demon. These people's powers are not from God. Because they are not righteous. Here is how you make your discernment. You always go back to the word of God. Who will pass the test of faith? How many of you out here have stood by and watched these pastors attack me and said and did nothing about it? Who will pass the test of faith? How easy will it be for every single one of you to take the mark of the beast, you really have to sit and think about this one. This trial is also a test of faith. Who shall be found to be true? The overcomers won't overcome because we had the gift to heal the sick. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the grace. And the word of his testimony, the knowledge of Christ, we won't be deceived by any fake doctrines or false works because the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance the truth, which is the nuance that separates the mere professing Christian from the true disciple of Christ. Amen. So this is everything that I've been seeing out here that I have been trying to tell you guys. And nobody would see it. Nobody would see it. For it has been the Lord's will throughout the generations that all seek Him and come to the knowledge of truth. 1 Timothy 2, 4 to 2. 1 Timothy 2, 4, 2 Peter 3, 9. And as evidenced by the following quotes from our Lord, to seek Him was never about seeking after signs and wonders, but simply following the guidance of His voice by abiding in His Word. 
which is what I said the other day, our primary directive was to spread his word to everyone who has never heard his word, not cast out demons. That is a secondary aspect of what we were commanded to do. Here are the words. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Luke 6.36 My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John 10.27 This pastor that, I'm, that, ha, that has abused me and had two of his pastors abuse me who made that video that salvation cannot be lost repeated all of these things and you will see how he twists it. You will see how he twists it. My sheep hear my voice which means you follow what this Bible says. You live in a righteous way and you treat people how you want to be treated. And the gifts that are given freely to you, you freely give to others. You don't pick and choose like you're a little God who you're going to help. None of these people are righteous. None of them. None of them are anointed. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. Go back to that verse again. People will say, Lord, Lord, I casted out demons in your name. I prophesied in your name. He will say, I did not know you. There was no relationship. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. They will by no means follow a stranger. How many of you stood up against these pastors attacking me and refusing to help me? How many of you have done that? Well, you have followed. You have followed. I ask you again, how easy will it be for you to take the mark of the beast? You really need to get busy out here. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. John 10, 4-5. So these pastors that also were underneath the top pastor of that church, if they knew the voice of God, they would have never ever followed through with what they were being instructed to do to come out and attack me. If they knew God's voice, they would have never done it. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples, indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8.32 Indeed, Jesus' earthly ministry commenced with a miraculous sign and he performed many more miracles for the next three and a half years. John 2, 11, 20, 31. He also said that those who believe in him would do greater works than he. John 14, 12. Yet he also made it a point to condemn seeking after signs and wonders. Why? Well, it wasn't because signs and wonders in themselves are evil or even because they would necessarily cease in our generation. It was because wicked men failed to place signs and spiritual gifts in the proper place. And being wicked would also fail to see the spiritual gifts as a means to an end, which is to know Christ and to build his church, rather than an end in themselves, which is what you're seeing here. This article is very, very good. It explains everything that has been going on out here. Um, I'm going to leave that right there. There are two videos that I want to show you.
this is, I, I'm only going to show you, <coughs> show you a little bit. This is a video of somebody opening a person's kundalini. And I want you to see how the body is jerking and moving and where he touches these people to open their kundalini. He goes right for the stomach. This is the same exact thing that happens when people go to open um, the Holy Spirit, to have the Holy Spirit uh, baptize people. It's the same thing that happens. I'm going to show you the correlation here. watching this will be seeing this kind of activity for the first time ever in their life right well sorry about that because <laughs> <laughs> it would be a bit of a shock to the system and it might be hard to believe what, what would you say to those people they they won't believe it but there's nothing i can say you know after old friends this is a practitioner of kundalini I have seen the same thing with people um, who are at deliverance deliverance uh, ministries and they, they were being told the Holy Spirit is upon you the Holy Spirit is upon you and they would start doing these same movements and the person would touch them in the stomach now here is the difference um, let me there's one there's one other video This is this is a mass deliverance. This is a mass deliverance. Watch what's happening here. He's actually throwing bottled water on these people. There is no difference in what you're seeing from right there to what you're seeing with Kundalini awakening. So how do you discern these spirits? How do you discern these spirits? Here you have people who are, are out in the world saying they're prophetesses and they're pastors who are highly anointed. One just constantly uh, talks about the Holy Spirit and he was the one who was out here telling me that I did not have the Holy Spirit. He was the, the, the governor of the Holy Spirit 
He was the one who decided who had the Holy Spirit out here as he was abusing me out here with the rest of these pastors. How do you discern these spirits? Will you now understand that these people are the furthest thing from righteous? They're not living by God's word. Their egos are massive, which means they are idolaters. These are the exact people that God will turn away from and call lawless. So what exactly, what spirits are actually being put into these people? And you also have to understand that in these mass deliverances, th these people are filled with demons. This is why they went to a mass deliverance. Not all of these demons have been cast out. What kind of spirits are flying around in this room? You have to understand what's happening here. It is not a pretty sight. It is not a pretty sight. This is idolatry. All of these people go in to see one person because they believe that one person is so special. This is idolatry. Not only are they idolizing themselves, they're causing others to sin by idolizing them. In addition to being mammon worshipers, do you understand all of these things are of the world? These people are not enlightened. These people have not had a relationship with God. They've had a relationship with a spiritual presence, but it wasn't from the light. Satan appears as an angel of light. If these people had a real present uh, experience with God, they would be righteously living by the word of God, and they are not. So what exactly is the difference between what they're doing and what a kundalini practitioner is doing? Who they are out here bashing to the ground. And they're doing the same exact thing. This is the sleep in a nutshell. There's nothing but idolatry going on. Lawlessness. Unrighteousness. Abuse. And every single person out here who has witnessed it has said nothing about it. Because these people had the titles of a prophetess and of pastors, you all said nothing and you stood by and watched them abuse me. How easy will it be for you to take the mark of the beast? I will put everything in the description and I hope you all have a blessed day.